Let's hear some more stories as political parties, representatives and civil society groups have been reacting to the proposal by the Electoral Commission to be considered by IPAC. While the NDC has rejected the proposals, the MPP and other political parties have welcomed it. Yes, I mean, I think that uh, we need to um, uh, have declared a public holiday. I think that, is, that would enable the process to be more effective. Um, once you do that, then most people can go out, they don't have to go to work and so on, and combine that. So I think you have to combine uh, declaring, using the executive instrument, declare it a holiday to make it work. Uh, there are so many benefits, just people being able to uh, count, you know, under natural light, just the security arrangements that you need to be able to get the coalition processes done. So for me, I, I think that it's due time. There's been... It's been an issue that has been floated around many times, but this is the first time we have seen, if you look at the data from 2016 election, 2020 election, that election day tends to move very quickly because we've really increased. And you forget that even in some urban areas, polling stations are also then redemarcated into A, B, C, D, and so on. Issue of polls closing at 3 p.m. instead of 5. Uh, I remember the EC have put up that proposal, we agreed, but because of COVID, uh, it couldn't come into fruition. What happened was that the EC uh, agreed with political parties to reduce the number of registered voters per polling station. A threshold of 749 was agreed, said that you don't have too many people, as many as 2,000, 2,000 or 1,500 queuing at the polling station where polls are supposed to close at five. And my sister, when polls close, it doesn't mean that the, everything has come to an end. The laws of this country states who political parties are. Again, by practice and convention, we know political parties that have been active in IPAC. So if all of a sudden, out of the blue, political parties that you have not seen you don't know them you've never had, they've never been involved in the electoral process and that's why i made the distinction between the apc cpp pnc and others okay and political parties that we have never up to today you don't even know where the officers are you they, they are, are so-called officers who come to you you haven't even seen them before and all of a sudden they appear on this and when they appear on the scene what then happens is that when there's a deliberation and there's a contentious issue okay then let's vote ah Oh, when we vote, then all those parties that you cannot determine where they are, or where they are coming from, they all vote in support of the EC's position. That these proposals that some of which were put out are not entirely new proposals. Mm. At my time at IPAC, some of these things were discussed extensively. We reached more or less a conclusion. I think for the Electoral Commission's own delays and decisions, some of these proposals could not be implemented. One of the proposals, as we are aware, which went to Parliament was to shift the voting period from December to November, mm -hmm. which went to Parliament, and for some reason, Parliament rejected that. It was trained to us because all of us took into consideration happenings in 2008, where there was a runoff and the runoff itself, which was held, could not lead to a determination. And mm -hmm. that on the 28th of December, there was the time election to determine a winner. And that meant that you had virtually less than five, uh, 10 days to the inauguration or swearing in of a new president.